Hello everyone and welcome to the new episode about editing with Darktable. In this episode we will continue our work with color harmonies and this time we will shift our focus from color corrections that we have done in last two episodes toward color grading. So let's get started. This photo is quite dark so first we will make some corrections and of course we need to brighten the photo a little bit and we can go to the color balance RGB and add some brightness also there and contrast and some saturation so that we are able to uh, see what kind of colors we have here so let's uh, think about what needs to be done in this photo we have here quite interesting illumination of the photo. Uh, we have, I think, front light, which is quite color neutral from the front diffuse. And what we also have is some kind of fill light from the side, which is uh, some kind of uh, yellow or orangey. And this gives that part of this, of our woman, and also the background, some kind of yellow, greenish look. On the other side, we have a nice color composition between blue on the umbrella and also blue in the ornaments of the kimono versus color of the skin and also those accents in red in kimono and also in the face. So we need to enhance that a little bit. And I have would like to improve the background so I'm not fan of that yellow greenish look and also tame down the bloop area of the of the photo the umbrella and those ornaments and maybe also desaturate a bit the skin so that we can add some accent to the red because it is uh, quite gives some gives them photo quite interesting look okay so before we do that i would like to add the snapshot and maybe also make one copy of the photo and now we can start to deal with the colors so first we want to white balance our photo so we can use color calibration for that and add some white balancing and it looks a bit more colder but i don't want to touch anything here because we don't have any good samples that we can use so we'll leave it there and we will go immediately to the vector scope and see what we have and as you can see we have some analog reddish area here with red and yellow greenish in one area and on the other area we have that blue which is quite tight so i think uh, the nice color harmony will be for that analog complementary so let's rotate that i will say maybe to this point something like that and to be able to see uh, the how the colors are looking in the in the photo also and in the vectorscope we will add a few samples now with color picker so we will start with skin tone here maybe skin tone there then i will add also one yellow here from the ribs of the umbrella of course, we need to display those things in Vectroscope. And what else? So let's go to the red. We need to enable it again. Add some red samples. And also blue. And maybe one of those here. To be able to see 
So that, those are most important parts. And as you can see, oh, I forgot to add this one. This is quite important, excuse me. It was this green because I would like to get the read uh, of those green yellowish in the background. Now we can immediately start to color grade our photo with the next instance of uh, color calibration and we will use uh, uh, our channel mixer for that. And what needs to be done is to sh we need to shift that one, this one, a little bit towards uh, orangey, so in this direction, and also the blue in this direction. Again, this one and in this direction. So this area needs to be shifted a little bit. And to be able to do that, we can go to the red channel in the channel mixer and add some green to the red. Let's say so far, oh, that's maybe too much, but let's see. We can compensate that by removing the blue. And as you must have seen, we have already done some nice rotation here. We can improve it even better. For example, we can give the green a little bit of blue and shift the blue down. We need to compensate that by adding some green back. Maybe also red, let's see. Yeah. Just about that. And the last thing, I think we can move the reds a little bit in the direction of green here. Even more and add the green to the blue. So approximately here. So that is the first step. You see already the difference. No, we don't have that strange uh, yellow greenish in the background. And we have shifted our colors according to the color harmony. But we're not done yet. I will also go go with the next instance of color calibration, color balance um, module, and try to improve it even better with four-way stab. What I would like to do, I would like to tame down the color of the background a little bit. So I can use now global offset, maybe there. Find a, switch, uh, a nice spot. Well, as you can see, we didn't change our color harmony, but we have changed now the mood of the background a little bit by adding the blue overall in the, in the whole uh, photo. And I would like to compensate that just a bit with chroma in the background. That means in chroma in the shadows. Let me see. So that we have now a nice brownish background, which fits much better to the red area in the photo. Let me see how far we should go. Maybe we can also use the luminance of the shadow lift to adjust a bit the brightness of the photo in the same time. And now we have done the first steps. I don't know, let me try. What happens if I add just a bit more Yes, I will also add a bit more red in the highlights just to shift those points here a little bit up. So they have a nice spreading of the colors overall. And now we need to deal with colors and with saturation in the next steps. So what I would like to do, I would like to use color balance RGB next instance and desaturate the blues of the photo. So I don't need to choose 
any of the things in the color picker, but just go directly and find some sample maybe here in umbrella as starting point. And now we can brighten that. Maybe we can also go to the green and also in the other direction so that we cover all those bluish areas in the photo. Maybe something like that. Add some feathering. Maybe also a bit more of mass contrast. And now we want to desaturate those areas. Something like that. What we also can do, we can use now Hue Shift option in a color balance and shift that blue just a tiny bit to this direction, direction of the green. So we need to go there. No, in the opposite direction here. Something like that. Not too far. I don't want to have that greenish. That should be blue still, but just a tiny bit down. Now, okay, the next thing, what I would like to do is to shift or to add let me see. I would like to desaturate this area here because it's quite... This area in the skin, I don't like that orangey saturated area. So let's add one more color balance HGP and select that area. I would like to desaturate that uh, area of the skin. And find some sample for the mask and see what we get and now we can also we can add some feathering but we can also use saturation slider to improve that even better the mask and the same sample as you can see now we have selected practically only these areas which are quite saturated and we can disable the mask and now we can play with the saturation. So I think we, I will use, I don't want to influence the brightness, so I will use linear chroma grading and the saturate shadows and midtones, the mostly. And maybe just a bit of highlights. So you see, it looks much better. The next step will be, I will also like to uh, desaturate a little bit the skin overall. So let's see what we can do. So I'll also need to use a uh, wrong. Let's choose this area and see what we have. That's more, mostly the skin. So let's go with the saturation just a tiny bit down. And maybe we can shift that also no in opposite direction. Just a tiny bit in this direction. So that we have some differences in the colors in the red area. Not too much. Just this and maybe let me see. Does this improve? Just add some tone there, but we need to desaturate it even more now. I just I would like to have that pale look in the skin. I think it fits nicely. <laughs> okay, what else we need to do is to I would like to add the saturation now in the in those accents, red accents. So what we need to do, we can use another instance of color, color balance RGB, choose those colors. <coughs> uh, 
here. Then we can brighten the mask a bit. Something like that. And add some saturation there. Only in mid-tones and shadows. As you can see, now we have a nice accent there. But what we also have, we have the problem with that light from the side. And this area is uh, had another color, so we need to improve that. So we will use another color balance RGB instance. Choose those colors. Let's see what we have here. Maybe brighten it in this direction not too much. Add some feathering. Not that so far. We don't want to influence that much. Let me see. Do, do we cover everything? Maybe I will also like to um, let me see where do we need to reduce that let me use one additional drone mask to reduce that only in this area, which need to be improved. That's approximately there, so we don't need to go to, we don't need to be too precise there. Okay, and now what we can do, we can shift that colors in this direction a little bit to fit the coloration to the rest. Maybe on that far. I think we need to go a bit more. Let me see. This area. No. In another direction. Just a tiny bit back. Something like that. And we can also add some saturation there. But not in the highlights. Just to improve the look of that area. <coughs> okay, the next step will be, let me see before and after. Now it fits much, much better. But I think we have gone too far with, yeah, that is more than I like. And this area is too bright. So we can use tonic realizer and tame it down a bit. But I don't want to influence the upper part, so let's use some mask, whatever. I think this one will be enough, good enough. So gradient mask. And we can also use one more instance of, of tonic realizer to add some contrast with a simple tone curve. Just in this direction. Be careful not to go too far. So let's see again before and after. And now we have improved our colors quite a lot. <clears throat> I think we could also. Let me see. Where do, he, where do we have those samples? This one and this one are here. 
and this one is there. So we need to choose those colors. I think we can choose the skin color and color. Let me try. Maybe that's that's too much, but let's let me try. I would like to shift a little bit to, towards uh, the, those areas towards yellow, just a tiny bit. So let's see. Do we have? And can we do that? So I don't know what to choose. Maybe also the skin thing or this one. It's not a big difference. <clears throat> And I will also like to use that. Something like that, but I would like to reduce that only on the upper part, on this area here. Doesn't need to be too precise. Where we have the skin. approximately we don't want to do big change so i don't think we need to play with the mask that much so let's see and we need to shift it in this direction just a bit yeah Let's disable the mask. Really only a tiny bit. Okay. Before and after. Anything else? Do we need to do anything else? We could, we could use diffuse and sharpen and give the photo a bit more a bit more softness. And for that, I'm using now diffuse and sharpen and diffuse the photo. But to tame it down a bit more, I can use also harmonic mean. So that's not big difference, but just a tiny bit of softening. And we can also use one more instance for add some clarity. And you can see when I go there, we have some softness. Clarity is too 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 much. Let's tame it down just with opacity slider. <coughs> okay, we're done with this one. And as you can see, although we didn't change that much the composition, color composition of the photo which is uh, predefined through the colors of the main motive in our photo. For example, that um, bluish part with umbrella and those ornaments in the kimono and those warm part the, of the skin and also that uh, red accent in the skin and or in the face and also in the kimono. But what we have done, we have changed the background quite a lot. We have removed the, the green practically and now that background fits much better to that predefined color composition. So it's not important to change every color so it's quite important to think about what needs to be done to get a, a specific uh, color composition. In this case it's what was quite easy to understand what to change because that composition is all, all already predefined. And now we are going slowly in that direction, which is described by 
Johanna Kustra in her video that I mentioned in first episode. So let's let's start now with another example. As always, let's start with corrections. So lens correction. Oh, that doesn't have. It's not important. In this case, denoising. I would like to also to rotate in perspective to change the geometry of the area. Let's see what we get. Something like that. And of course, exposure. Maybe a bit more contrast. And of course, colors so that we are able to see what kind of colors we have here in this scene. And as you immediately can see, we have two different areas. One is this uh, area up here, which is some kind of orangey, and bottom area, which is bluish and purplish. So we need to um, deal with that. We need to uh, combine those colors a bit better, unify that, and also we need to adjust the brightness in the photo. So let's first go with one more instance of exposure and balance the brightness. So let's see, I'll use a gradient thing and go down with exposure a bit. Let's see, where do we should have the gradient here, something like that. Of course, we can now go a um, bit more, bit higher with our contrasts. Let's say something like that first. <clears throat> and now we need to deal with colors. So let's first take a snapshot and maybe also go to light table and duplicate the photo so that we can see before and after much, much better. And then we'll work with duplicate. <clears throat> and now we can go immediately to our vectroscope and we see something like that. But in this case, I'm not fan of this uh, difference in colors. I would like to unify those colors. So let's go first with color calibration and see what we get. Well, it's too cold. Maybe we can choose some area on the bottom as orientation. Let's use maybe something like that. That looks much better now. And as you can see, we have lost those uh, bluish green part, which I like, but we need even more work to unify the colors. And we need to decide what kind of color harmony we will like to use. And I think what we have in this photo, we have two, those two different areas. One is that, uh, that orangey yellowish. And we also have another um, part of the warm colors this purplish in this case. So I think what can be interesting to for this one is uh, something like that. Dyad. Let's try to fit that into Dyad. But before we do that, I think maybe just a bit more rotation. I think we can use next instance of color calibration and play a little bit with channel mixer to get a bit more interesting color combination here. I'm not satisfied with that greenish yellow. So let's play a little bit with a channel mixer. And first thing what I would like to do, I will add some green to the yellow, to the red, excuse me, so that we maybe that much and also add some blue to the green. Uh, need to play a bit more in 
this direction. So that we have some kind of orangey look a bit more. And also, let me see what happens if I remove the blue. And maybe I could also add some blue in the red. Yeah. I think that looks much better. <clears throat> But we are not finished yet. I would also like to play with the bottom part by using color balance RGB. So let's go there, four ways tab, and let's see what can we do there. And also I would like to mask only the bottom part. Something like that. Let me see the mask. And now we can improve the colors of the bottom part even better. So what I would like to do is to add some, let me disable the indicator, to add some kind of orangey also in the shadows. Let me see how it looks like, works. I'm just trying to fit the colors with the upper part of the photo. Something like that, maybe we can add it's also in the mid-tones, just a bit. And now we need to balance the saturation, so we will remove overall saturation there. Now, as you can see, it's quite subtle change, but uh, makes the photo much better. And I will now rotate and bit this area here in Dyad, so that I have that orangey somewhere in the middle. And now I need to move those red parts here toward purple. So let's do that. Let's use next instance of color balance RGB. Choose those colors. Let me zoom in. Maybe, I don't know this one and now we can uh, make a mask around that sample or that point and see what we get a bit less <clears throat> okay feathering radius maybe even a bit less you must be careful i don't want to touch too much the skin of the woman And add some contrast here. I think this would be good. And now what we can do, we can shift the hue of the of that colors in this direction. Just a bit. I hope you can recognize that here. By the way, I could add some points just to be able to see maybe also the face just to be able to see where do we have our colors i hope you can see the difference <clears throat> And now we also need to play with saturation. So I would like to desaturate the upper part a bit more to balance the saturation to the bottom part. Maybe something like that. Let me see. And also, no, in this direction, just a tiny bit shift that part there. And now I, I will say we have a nice balanced uh, situation or uh, colors overall. But now we need to um, play a bit more with saturation and with contrasts. I will say what we need to do first, I would like to diffuse the not diffused, but um, 
remove the core, coarse part <coughs> of the local contrast with a contrast equalizer. So let me see how far should we go with mask. So I would like to calm down a little bit the, the local contrast in those areas without too much details. I don't know. Okay, let's say something like that. And now we can go down a little bit. Because our model had a lot of details and she stays contrasty. And now we can use Diffuse and Sharpen just to add a bit uh, fine local contrast. <clears throat> okay. How about saturation? Let me disable those things. We are quite nice here in our dyad, color-wise, but we need to play a little bit with saturation, I will say. So let me let me add one more instance of color balance that you be in. I think what we need to do is to remove a bit of the vibrance and add some saturation only in shadows. Maybe also remove though that saturation, not too much here. Something like that. And let me see. Yeah, we have a nice combination here. But what I would like to do is to emphasize the woman a little bit more. So what we can do is to go to uh, let me think exposure go down just a bit and add one more about there with wide feathering and add some brightness oh not too much just a tick Yeah. And I think we're good. We don't need to do anything else. As you can see now with this reduction of the colors, we have now uh, have nice uh, composition, color composition. So let's see before and after here. It's a quite huge difference, but I think I need a bit more the situation in the highlights or maybe also in mid-tones I'm not fan of oversaturated photos something like that now we have unified our color suit on our photo okay let's see it there Yeah, the difference is quite big. You see, just by removing some colors from the photo, in this case, the blue, that blue cast on the bottom, we have now improved quite a lot our uh, composition. Okay, the next example. This will be our last example for this episode. And before we can decide what to do with this one, we need to make first some adjustments, lens corrections, denoising, a bit more, let's go back here, a bit more brightness, contrast, and saturation and in this case we also need to uh, make some white balance because it is quite greenish so let's do that also with color calibration and that's too bluish let's find some other area let's say here and see what we get that looks much better now <clears throat> 
And now we can think about what needs to be done here. So let, let me add a bit more saturation. And of course, snapshot. And also duplicate. So that we can have comparison. And now let's see what needs to be done here. I will say we need to, we have two different areas. Let me also go back to the vector scope and disable on that harmony. And as you can see, we have here some kind of cross again. And what we can use here, we can use a square or what I think it's much better in this case, and I will explain why. The thread, the thread. So let's see something somewhere here. Why? Because um, we have our model, which is quite separated from the background in the color. So we have that, that area here, which is our practically area of our model. We have some other parts which are not so important but the most most uh most part is in this upper part is our model and the background is of course the rest here so i would like to separate that even better therefore i would like to use uh, tetrad because we now now need to compress those two together green, yellowish, and blue together. And maybe also separate a little bit uh, those two, which are part of our model. So that means we need to remove the yellowish from the green. It's quite opposite from the first example that we've done in, in this uh, episode. And that can be done with a next inst instance of color calibration. Of course, again, we will play with channel mixer first. And this time, I would like to uh, go in the red channel and maybe remove some green from the red and add some blue there. Just a tiny bit maybe a bit more red so just with this step you see we have improved uh, that bottom part a bit better and now what we'd also like to do is to separate the greens from the red a bit more let's say something like that and in the last step i would like to go down because i'm now watching the the skin of the woman with the red so remove the blue from the blue channel by using input red and compensate that by going back with input green so you see we have managed to shift those two areas there without touching that much the upper part but we now need to improve the saturation so we can use color for this tab. And I think we need to desaturate the green quite a lot, maybe also the blue, and add the saturation back only in the red channel. Something like that. So only with this one, we have already quite nice uh, improvement. But I would like to improve it even better with next instance of color balance HGB and I will like to go to the four ways tab <clears throat> and this time I will only use shadows and highlights because I would like to add in the shadows a bit more colder look let's say something like that maybe even go no that's too much and Add in the highlights something warmer. It's quite quite subtle 
change but it improves the photo a bit more now let me go this way and of course we need to uh, desaturate that better so now the next step what we need to do is uh, we need to play a little bit with um, this area is actually quite good now well we need to play with colors of our woman and first thing what I would like to do is to desaturate those red parts of the skirt of the woman a little bit and maybe also shift it in this direction so let's do that with the next instance of color balance rgb uh, let me choose those colors <coughs> excuse me need to find those maybe we can also use a saturation thingy so that we don't change that much the rest and of course we also need some feathering and now we can desaturate that let me see what I don't want is I don't want to touch the lips so let me also add some drone mask no we need to disable it just for that area here doesn't need to be so precise and now we can desaturate that let's desaturate the shadows and mid tones in both directions and i would also like to shift that in direction of the purple so we can use also color balance rgp hue shift for that and we need to go there not too much just that to be to stay in the middle and that is the first change the next change what i would like to do is to play a little bit with saturation uh, and maybe also with the uh, colors of the skin of the woman so let's use the next instance and choose the skin area i think i will like to use something like that here quite bright range and also let me try that this way everything that is purple and reddish so including we would like to include also hair hair as far as possible and now of course i want to uh, improve the color only on the skin so we also need a drone mask to reduce that influence uh, and we will include the hair something like that I could also go here doesn't need to be super precise but let me add one point here okay and what I would like to do is to add some saturation also in midtones and maybe shift that in opposite direction oh that's too much we don't want we don't want we want it only in the middle approximately there let me disable that indicator so that we can see the difference see it's small difference but it's it's a quite nice change and what i would also like to do to desaturate even more of those greenish 
I would like to have some pastel colors. So let's just add a next one and choose those colors there. It's approximately that. What are the colors when I choose this one? What do we have here? Let me see. Because I would also like to desaturate that first, maybe. Because I don't want to have bluish, that bluish cast in the shadows here. You go here. And we will reduce saturation there. I don't, I think we can go this far. It's almost unnoticeable, but it's quite important. And um, the next thing is, yeah, that green need to be desaturated, or that bluish green. Well, let's do that quick. Maybe a bit more up. No, that's too far, too far. Feathering. And of course the saturation, I think also in the shadows and mid-tones. A bit more in shadows. And now let's compare, compare another photo. It looks much better. We can now use the next instance of color balance HGB and increase the saturation overall. It's time because we have balanced our saturation locally. And now we can add a bit more in the shadows and in the mid-tones. Let me see. Yeah. What I think we also need to do, we need to shift the blue area just a tiny bit in direction of the of the green. Not that much. So let's do that with the next instance real quick. We'll see what we get. Um so I think I think this could be that let me also add a point there i think we need this one yeah but i would like to add the point for this area just to find those those bluishes maybe here i don't know or there. Yeah, approximately. And let's see, what do we have those also in the... Here and here, yeah. So we can go so far. And desaturate uh, first a bit and also shift those colors into this direction. Just a bit. It's almost unnoticeable, but it plays the role. And let me see. Could we also play a little bit with the brightness? Yes, we could uh, go to the first instance and play a bit more with the brightness of our photo. And what I would like to do is to add some <clears throat> or to remove some coarse local contrasts.
Oh, why did I... Yes, no. It's getting slow a little bit. And we need to improve the feathering. And I will just go with this part down a bit. Something like that. And of course, we can now use also Diffuse and Sharpen and move it above Contrast Equalizer, apply some kind of sharpening. It's less last thingy. So, mm, let me uh, go back with, I don't want to desaturate that. I think it's better without the saturation. Yeah. Okay, this is how it looks before and after. Now we have unified our colors a bit. And through the, that unification, we have now separated uh, the color of our main subject, the woman, with the colors of the surroundings. So let's see. This way. Although this is also not bad, but uh, we have better separation between uh, her and the rest of this. Uh, another example. Before concluding this episode, I would like to make a short excursion to a related topic of color grading that I have been asked to do a lot. And that is the imitation of various analog film looks and color styles from movies. I'm not a fan of it at all, but to close that topic, I would like to give you a few hints on how to proceed. For analog film look, Darktable has a special module to be able to add so-called lookup tables with which you can immediately get that desired effect. So let's uh, demonstrate that real quick. So I need to copy uh, this photo. And for that first you need to white balance your photo, but it's quite important. And this uh, version of our photo is after white balance, so we can use this one. And you don't want to add any contrast and anything else, only white balance your photo. So I will also disable color balance RGB so that we have that flat look. And now you can add a lookup table for a particular look. And UT, uh, LUT 3D module. And first of all, what you need to do well, I forgot to tell you, you need to go to the uh, preferences and in processing tab, you need to add the folder with those lookup tables for different uh, analog looks or other looks. And then you can choose some particular look. And in the comment from the, my last episode, someone had asked me to make some um, film look uh, analog film look. Um, I think it was Kodak Portra 400. So let's see what this one looks like. The next thing what you need to do, you see uh, it doesn't look right. You need to find the color space for that particular uh, lookup table and you can find that color space in an application color space or choose it could be different color spaces. I think this one is, could be linear rec 200, yes. <clears throat> or even linear pro photo. But I would like to use that linear rec 2020 RGB because that's also the color space, working color space in dark table. And now, you have that particular look. You didn't. You didn't. Don't need to do anything else. But if you want to mimic that in Darktable, for example, to 
uh, learn how to get that particular look. Uh, I will now add snapshot and you have a particular snapshot for that uh, look. And now you can disable Loot 3D module and start to uh, find or to get that particular look with the tools in the dark table. Okay, how to do that? So first we will enable our snapshot to see the difference. And first the thing that I would like to do or I will do in this case is to use color balance HGB to adjust the contrasts first. So let's try that. Just go doesn't need to be perfect at the, at the moment. Let's see. And of course, I will also yeah, like to add some saturation uh, to be able to see the difference later. And now, more or less, we are prepared to deal with colors. And of course, the first and the best tool for uh, adjustment of colors is, as we all used before, our uh, channel mixer in color calibration. So let's use that again. I will make a, a copy of the color calibration and I'll go the red directly go to use the channel mixer because it's quite power, powerful for all color grading. For analog film or also for film look and for other color grading options. And now we need to see uh, what needs to be changed color wise. So as you can see, this area in the greens is need to get rid. We need to get rid of that yellow part in the greens. And I don't think we need to change that much in the warm colors. For example, when we look at our model, there's not so much change. But we'll proceed uh, as uh, before. So first, I would like to go to the uh, vectroscope and to see what we get here. And by the way, we can. No, let, let me leave it there. Uh, we can now um, add some points. I don't want to add too much, just the most important. So let's add one in the face, one here, uh, I don't know, one here, brighter green or yellow green. Then what we also need is some blue areas. Let's find it here maybe and here. And I don't know, I don't think we need anything else. So we have enough points and let's see how we can now develop our photo according to that particular look. As I have said, we need first to change the colors of the green background. And we can do that just by removing input green from the red maybe add this time a bit more input blue to the red and you immediately have quite, quite similar look but we're not done we can also play a little bit with the green so i think we can add a bit red let me see we need to experiment here i am not quite sure what could work best let's say something like that we don't need to have perfect um, match but just approximately and also let's, let me play a little bit with these values here and always watching the the colors i think we can try opposite let me see
Uh, that's, that looks much better. And now we have approximately uh, done the first step. What we also need to do is to adjust the color fullness. So well, let's go down with color fullness of the blue and green and add some color fullness in the red. And as you can see, we have now uh, in the original, in that Kodak thingy, we have some yellowish all orangey in the highlights. So we can now use uh, Color Balance LGP. I will use one more instance and try to play with the four ways tab. So first, I will add some orangey in the highlights. Yeah, I think that match quite nicely, but we also need to change the midtones and the shadows. So in the midtones, we can try first uh, to use um, global offset and see what we get. Uh, we are almost there. Let me see what happens because the tree is not so bluish, what happens if I add a bit more red to the shadows? Yeah, it fits a bit better. And I don't know, maybe also there. A bit more uh, blue or green in mid-tones. And now we are approximately uh, done our job. So you don't need to be uh, completely precise, but now you, you see, uh, I will say uh, our version in the dark table looks much better because we don't have that flat uh, highlights like in this uh, color or in this uh, version of the Kodak. And we can try to improve it even better here with saturation. So I think we can try to get that flat look a little bit closer. I oh, no. oh, don't want to go there too much. We don't want to have that much contrast. And of course we can also play with uh, saturation. I don't know. Let's see. Do we have any improvements? I don't think we need to add that much. But let's say we are approximately uh, there. So I don't, I don't think we need to do more. So that's practically the way <clears throat> you can achieve almost every analog look. And yeah, that's about it in the case of this, of this kind of uh, matching colors. In the same way, you can achieve also different cinematic looks. I will show you two examples, two most popular examples. So let me duplicate this one. Um, the first one is utterly overused, teal and orange. And this um, look is quite easy to achieve, or basic version of this look is quite easy to achieve just with color with a um, channel mixer. So let's add a next instance of a channel mixer. And now we can go to the red channel and remove the red just with the help of input red, input, input green and input blue, excuse me, and add it back. And also we can go to the green channel and make the half of input green and input blue and you have already that uh, kind of look. Now you can improve it with the blue channel for example. You have you can have a bit more uh, orange yellowy version or or if you want um, to um, transfer a bit more from the green you go with the green up and blue back and so on and so on and so forth. <clears throat> it's quite, I will say, overused uh, look, but uh, people like that. And if you want to do that, you can do that in this this way. And the another example is um, 
let me add one more, is some kind of deviation of that look. And that is the look which is often, uh, which is used by Wes Anderson. Uh, this kind of Wes uh, Anderson look. I will try to show you how to get this real quick from an asteroid city. And it's also quite easy. So um, we can use another instance of color calibration. And in this case, what we need to do, we need to use the green channel also for the blue channel. So we can go to the blue first. <coughs> blue channel and swap input green and input blue. So let's swap that real quick. Go to the one. And here we need to go to the zero. And we have the basic uh, adjustments for that. And to be able to get this one, you just need to go with the, with the input red a little bit down, approximately. And of course, you can play also with, with those two sliders in the red channel. And if you want to have some bit more bluish, in the, you can go to the blue channel and add some blue and whatever. So you have, again, different um, options here but i'm not fun at all to um, get those things because i like to see how the photo developed in theft itself and try to find my own way to uh, get particular look without copying some existing uh, uh, looks but um, it's not bad to find some looks and try to achieve it with the dark table itself to be able to learn uh, those different uh, tools and as you have seen the most important is channel mixer so my uh, recommendation will be if you want to uh, be able to get different looks and uh, different um, color uh, combinations or uh, color um, contrasts and so on to first learn how to use channel mixer that is one of the most most important tools okay i will now like to end this episode it's too long and we will uh, have one more about color grading with help from uh, um, color harmonies and this time we will concentrate much more about how to change the mood by using different color harmonies for the same photo okay so thank you for watching and until the next time